One in eight couple trying to conceive have difficulty conceiving. Of those couples, one third have a female factor, one third have a male factor, and a third are either unexplained or have combined factors. In the male, most commonly infertility is unsuspected. And it's not unusual for a man to have a semen analysis and to be told that he's sterile with absolutely no symptoms at all. So essentially, a couple without any fertility problems has about a 20% chance per month of pregnancy. After six months, about 60% of couples will conceive. So if a couple has not been using protection and they have not conceived after 12 months, we say that they warrant an infertility evaluation. If the female partner is over 35 years of age, we say after six months of trying, consider an evaluation from a fertility specialist because her age is becoming an issue to where getting pregnant may be more difficult. We can divide causes of male infertility into problems with sperm productions or problems with sperm passage through the duct system. So if you're talking about problems with production, it's usually the most common cause is overheating of the testicle due to enlarged veins around the testicle known as varicoceles. Problems with sperm um, passage along the duct system could be due to trauma, an injury that could block the vas. In the woman, the most important factor is the egg quality and the egg quantity. We say that typically the egg quality is reflected by the woman's age, where the older a woman gets, the lower the quality of egg. However, there's also an issue with egg quantity, and so that is variable based on age. And so we investigate both hormonal parameters and ultrasounds to investigate the egg quantity. Treatment options depend on the cause. So if it's a surgical problem, like an obstruction, this can be fixed microsurgically. Uh, if it's a varicose vein that's overheating the testicles, this can be repaired again uh, using microscopic techniques. Um, if it's a hormonal problem, then we go to medical therapy, either oral or injectable, depending on the cause of the problem. So every treatment is personalized to the couple, and so it depends on a thorough initial evaluation of the male component, the female ovarian component, which includes ovulation, oocyte quality and ovarian reserve, fallopian tube evaluation, and uterine evaluation. So based on that evaluation, we devise a personalized treatment plan where this can include from ovulation induction medications, oral medications, to injectable medications, to surgery, to in vitro fertilization. I would say the majority of men, uh, we can help. Um, I think all too often we don't get to see the male. Uh, the woman is treated and if there are sufficient sperm uh, to enter a, an in vitro fertilization cycle, then we may never see the man until he has failed one or two IVF cycles. And I really think that the men should be seen initially just so they can feel that they have their own doctor and someone that they can talk to about their own problems. There have been studies looking at infertility as contributing to stress as much as receiving a cancer diagnosis. So a woman's desire to become a parent is very strong and infertility causes a lot of stress. But the message here is of hope that we have a lot of options for both diagnosis and treatment of infertility regardless of if your issues are ovarian, uterine, tubal, or male factor. And so, yes, our treatment options are excellent, but I recommend that a couple who's having difficulty conceiving should consider evaluation by a specialist sooner rather than later so that we can identify and hopefully treat whatever factors are contributing to the infertility.